Today we're going to learn a new word, octillion, which is the number of atoms in one person. To situate this number on our heads, the following diagrams show the main stepping stones in the synthesis of the human, starting from water. Each entity is comprised of a specific number of elements in various numbers. Water, two elements, three atoms. RNA, five elements, several thousand atoms. The bacteria cluster, 15 elements, a billion atoms. And the human, 26 elements and an octillion atoms. In a chemical sense, the key perspective to note is that each of these entities, water, RNA, bacteria, lemur, and the human is a molecule, no different than any other molecule, technically defined as a structure of two or more atoms. To give a further idea of just how large an octillion atoms is, the bacteria colony is mentioned is comprised of a billion atoms. A cluster of pre-aquatic worms is comprised of a quadrillion of atoms. A small fish is comprised of sextillion atoms. One human, or technically one human molecule, is comprised of, as discussed, an octillion atoms, or 10 to the 27 atoms, or one with 27 zeros following it. The Earth, which can also technically be defined as a molecule, is comprised of sexdecillion atoms, or 10 to the 51 atoms. The sun is comprised of octodecillion atoms, or 10 to the power of 57. Lastly, the Milky Way galaxy is comprised of un bigentillion atoms, or 10 to the power of 66. And the observable universe is comprised of about ses bigentillion atoms, or 10 to the power of 81 atoms. To situate the word octillion deeper in our mind, we may define the human as a molecule comprised of an octillion atoms. To go through one example, in 1874, American economist Henry Carey, known commonly as the Newton of social sciences for his use of physics and chemistry in explaining social phenomenon in terms of reactions between the human molecules, he states, that man, the molecule of society, is the subject of social science. In his explication of the term social heat, or frictional heat generated between interactions of human molecules or people in society, he states that in the organic world, every act of combination is an act of motion. So it is in the social one. If it is true that there is but one system of laws for the government of all matter, then those which govern the movements of the various inorganic bodies should be the same with those by which it is regulated motion of society, and that such is the case can readily be shown. Next, in commentary on the antiquated Berthelot Thompson principle, which states that heat of a reaction is the true measure of affinity, Carey comments that to motion there must be heat. And the greater the heat, the latter, the more rapid will be the former. In commentary on this, Austrian social economist Werner Stark states that in the physical universe, heat is engendered by friction. Consequently, the case must be the same in the social world. The particles must rub together as they do there. The rubbing of the human molecules, which produces warmth, light, and forward movement, is the interchange of goods and services and ideas.